you let me know when you're ready, Mr. Brad. Okay. We'll call the Planning Commission to order for February 28th, 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, roll call, please. Candy? Here. Tom? Here. James? Here. Donnie? Here. Kevin? Here. Josh? Here. Uh, before we do the approval of the agenda, I have uh, uh, some items that we will not be discussing tonight. Under the uh, public hearing, the co-part number three and number four, the variance and conditional use, we will not be discussing tonight. Under the Board of Zoning Adjustments, we will not be discussing the variance. And then under the Planning Commission, items five, six, and seven, uh, we will not be discussing those tonight as well. Those have been tabled to move to the, the to the March meeting. So with those changes, I would ask for an approval of the agenda. Motion to approve tonight's agenda. A second. Roll call, please. Josh? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Yes. Candy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Donnie? Yes. And approval of the February 13th, which was actually for the, the uh, canceled January meeting uh, minutes. Need approval on that, please. Make approval for February 13th minutes. Second. First and second. Roll call, please. Donnie? Yes. Tom? Yes. Josh? Yes. Candy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Yes. Okay, at this time, I will ask for comments for the citizens, and this will be comments that are anything other than what's on the agenda. If you would, just come up to the podium, state your name, address, and try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. That would be appreciated. And if you're online, if you want to raise your hand, we'll get you in as well. So this is your comments time. This is for comments on things other than what's, other than the what's on the agenda. Yeah, agenda items, we'll discuss those in a, in a bit. Hello, uh, my name is Chris Hamrick, and I am a, I'm a house builder, I'm a residential house builder, and I'm working with uh, the Goldmans and Miss Julie here. And so they do have on the public hearing, number one, the rezoning of uh, Rush Creek Road property. Mm -hmm. But what I uh, am going to ask about is while we're here, uh, Mr. Brad, who's very familiar with the whole situation, um, <clears throat> this property, the bottom half of it is in a, a floodplain. And so I think the rezoning is on here, but the variance to restructure how you would, would they would like to re uh, for a variance because of the width of the property. I'd like if we could, I, I know they would like uh, to maybe discuss that whenever we do number one. And that was that was what we would. So you want to discuss the variance during? That yes, time. sir. If that's Brad, is that well? We'll have to go through the whole variance process. That, that's fine. Yeah. That yeah, that, yeah. It, we'll have to do this part okay. first, and then yeah, and we can discuss after okay. after the meeting. Okay, yes. yep. sounds great. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Chris. Any other comments? How about anybody online? No, nobody online. Okay, that does it for the citizens' comments. We don't have any old business. New business is we are going to elect a new vice chairman to the planning committee. So I will open it up for, um, I guess, a nomination of a vice chairman. Anybody has got the broad shoulders? That would be you too, Candy. Yeah. 
guess nobody wants to be vice chairman or nobody wants to nominate anybody. <laughs> wow. That's encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's qualified. Um, I don't believe this is a, yeah, I don't believe so. I, no, I don't believe it'll be a citizens during this, this, this time. Thank you though. Well, if there's no nominations, I, I could nominate James. I think he's shown an involvement and a willingness to uh, take the time to, to look into things and appreciate his time in it. So we do have a motion for James Dean to be vice chairman. Do I have a second for that request? I'll second that. And that is a second. Um, I would ask for comments, <clears throat> but I don't think it's going to get us very far. So I guess we'll just go automatically to a roll call on that there. Okay. Tom? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Josh? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? I, I I guess yes. There you go, Candy. Yes. Congratulations. You are boss. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. The pay just went down, but that's okay. Yes. Okay. Um, that is going to do it for that. We're going to go into our public hearing, and on the public hearing, we're going to uh, I'm going to actually bring this this into a uh, into session for our public hearing, February twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. And we will discuss uh, rezone of 2098 East Brush Creek Road. The applicant is requesting to rezone 2.14 acres of property from residential estate to residential one. And at this time, we will entertain uh, public hearing or public comment. During this time, this is strictly public comment. Commissioners are not uh, to comment during this time. So this is strictly just uh, public coming up and telling us your thoughts. So do we have anybody that would like to discuss item number one? Anybody online? Nobody, Nobody online? Yes, ma'am, come up, state your name and at address. Okay. My name is Jody Martian. I think you said 2098 East Brush Creek, I, but it's 2398 East Brush Creek. Own, it um, is 2398. Yeah. My husband, Gary, and I um, own that, and we split that property off um, based on the RE that we're in, which we were grandfathered in whenever we built. We aren't on a minimum of two acres there. My parents, aunt and uncle, no one that lives there is, is on that. We were grandfathered in. Um, Long story short, had some health issues, decided we need to probably retire a little a little earlier, a little better. So we decided to split that property off, which you all did, thank you, and it's 2.148 acres. Um, we put it for sale back in September. We've been very picky, not put it on real estate or anything until this family came along. And I knew it when I knew them immediately. They want to build and they want to also build with her parents next to them, which is exactly the way we are. They want to take care of each other exactly how we are. So um, we weren't going to do that. We had no intentions of doing that. But when we met them, it was it. It, it became emotional for me because that's that's what we do. That That's what I would like for them to do. And we, we know we all like to have good neighbors. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Jody. What was your last name? I'm sorry. Marsh, M A R S H. Anybody else like to comment on that item number one? Brad, nobody online? Okay. I am going to close that item and we're going to go on to item number two. And I hope I can read uh, my eyesight's going, so I'm, I'm trying here. So this is the rezone for uh, Henry Dutanti Boulevard. The applicant is requesting <clears throat> to rezone 0.67 acres of property from a C2 general uh, commercial to a CT general trades and services. And this time I will ask for public comment for item number two.
no comments from out here. How about, oh, we do have someone finally brave enough. My name is Nico Bercy. Yeah, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Just want to say hi to everybody here. Done a lot of projects in Cave Springs. Never had a chance to work with anybody in Tiny Town, but uh, been talking with Brad. Just excited to work with you guys and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Anybody online, Brad? Okay, I will close the public hearing at this time. Um, since we did not have the aborting of zoning adjustment item on our list, we will move right into the planning commission meeting uh, for February 28th, 2023. And our first item is the rezone of 2398. Uh, East Brush Creek Road. Uh, and then again, the applicant is requesting to rezone 2.14 acres property from uh, RE, residential single family, which is a minimum lot size of two acres, to R1, residential single family with a minimum lot size of one acre. At this time, I will ask Mark if you've got anything. Well, we stated that the uh, owners wish to sell 2.14 acres and allow for two single family residents. Um, staff analysis on this is that the proposed zoning will not affect the service area. Um, we received two neighbor comments that were in positive of it. Um, therefore, we're recommending the approval of the rezone request from of the 2.14 acres from RE to residential R1 single family residential. <clears throat> No, no, y'all. Did y'all want to make any comments during this time? Well, I, I, yes, you, we definitely want to make some comments during this time. Okay. Yeah. My, you, you might be mine. You can come on up at this time. I'm going to let okay. you make your comments. Yes. So, um, so as I think the picture's kind of getting painted here, what what we're trying to do with uh, rezoning of these, build two new houses. Uh, 2,000, 2,400 square footers in that area. We've already spoke with, uh, I think her name was Rebecca Corbett, Corbett the, uh, to get the engineering done for the septic systems. And you know, we've done a lot of preliminary work. We came down and visited with the nice people of Tawny Town. And, and um, so, so I think, guys, what we're trying to do, just broad stroke, is uh, stick with what you already have in that area. Um, we're not trying to you know, put a chicken farm out there, obviously. And, and uh, in addition, you know, they're going to be really nice houses. They're going to add to the city of Tawny Town, just so y'all guys are aware of what we're, the plans are with this, with this property. So uh, in addition to that, the bottom half of that is in a floodplain. So it's going it, to, this will require to do this. This will require a variance to just reshape those lots slightly. So we're able to get both of those houses, but I realize it's not what we're talking about right now, but but that will have to happen in addition to this. But just, uh, is there anything that, guys, any, we'd like to? No, I mean, eventually we will have to um, do the lot split and we've already spoken with um, a civil engineer and, and a work on site plan and stuff like that. But right now this is the first step to try to have home construction. Uh, are there any questions that y'all guys would have for us? We'll get we'll get there in just oh, a minute. Absolutely. So yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Just we're just getting your comments and then we'll we'll get there just momentarily. Thank you though, Chris. It's Chris, right? Yes, sir. Chris okay. Hammer. Yeah. Any other comments from citizens? Okay, I'm gonna ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve. A second. Got a motion and a second. How about discussion? Um, only discussion I would just want to bring up is to make sure they're fully aware of the um uh, it is in the floodplain and that the water waters have been known to rise and and they're not necessarily they've been they've been going up so just make sure you're not going to hold tawny town responsible for any kind of um flooding or problems like that in the future that you'd have to take care of that yourself is that you acknowledge that yes sir we because do. by allowing the variance we you know we're going we just want to make sure you're aware of that. Well, variants will come later. This is not, this is just well, right. Okay. Yeah. Variants will be down the road. So, your your intentions are to just your forever home? I'm homes? Forever home, yes. Yeah. Uh, my wife, I caught tell her she has millennial disease. 
she has to change jobs every two years. And it seems like we change houses every two years. And, um, you know, every time we buy a new house, this is it. Either they're going to evict us out or we're going to carry us out. This is it. And that doesn't wind up being the case. Um, I would have concerns about resale later on with that floodplain coming into play. So. Can I comment on that floodplain? <clears throat> yes, um, ma'am. I'll get you come up to the come up to the podium. Okay. Yep. The rezoning or the um, floodplain is going to be changed um, with FEMA, and it only affects that very bottom corner. They haven't redone it since two thousand eight. And so it is on FEMA's, I don't know, if the list agenda or whatever you call it to rezone that where only that very bottom corner of the right will be in it. That's all that's ever flooded on our property. Um, and, and they're aware they know it's the first thing we made them aware of. And so that will not be an issue. Hopefully it won't be an issue um, after um, Mayor Russell came out and saw it and did all the drainage improvements and stuff to it. We haven't had any any really major flooding since all those drainage improvements were to it. So, so that will be changed at some point, but we're waiting on FEMA. Thank you. I think the rezoned on R1 is what we've heard over and over again, what citizens want. They're aware of the flood issues. It's kind of their problem at this point with that as a contractor so i don't i don't see why we wouldn't rezone any other comments commission if it was me i'd probably make sure even if they're going to redo the do it, it, it you can always lift that up to bring it up yeah, out and Searching to make sure the house itself will be out of the floor. Right. And Good. Different drainage options. Yeah. Speak on that just real quick. Really? That way people online can hear us too. I'm, and I'm sorry to be beating the yeah. dead horse here, guys. I know. You're good. Sounds like we're going to probably end up at the same spot. But um, so if, if Mr. Brad, I, I know you don't work for me, but would you please go back to that, uh, to that one, one, yeah, the what with the, the yes, sir, please. So, so uh, everyone sees the the house that's already there that belong to the, these these nice people um, over here. That's our barn. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, well, so the 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 plan is just so y'all guys know to put two other houses, uh, you know, out both of them out of that flood zone. I'm a contractor, and so that land slightly slopes down. So, so what we will do, uh, and this is maybe too too much information for what this is, but what we will do is we'll dig our footers in Mother Earth, and we'll bring the fronts of those houses up. Okay, so we we won't be going down. We'll be adding to the staying out of that. We'll make sure that we you know plan this smart and and do the best we can do for these nice people. So that that is our construction process to 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 help this situation. Good deal. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Any other comments? Now we'll ask for roll call, please. Candy? Yes. Tom? Yes. James? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Josh? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to item number two is the rezone of Henry Dutante Boulevard. The applicant is requesting to rezone 0.67 acres of property from C2 to CT. Um, Mark, did you want to talk about this one or is the... I think I would have uh, Courtney talk about this okay. and she did the... She analyzed this whole thing. So Courtney, if you'll go ahead. Absolutely. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So this is some property that is right behind where Jose's is, and they are requesting to rezone it, like I said, from C2 general commercial to CT, which is commercial trades and services. And so generally in commercial trades and services, we see, um, you know, like small businesses, plumber shops, things like that, that, that are really uh -huh. not in C2, but are, you know. Hi, Courtney. Uh-huh. We have not heard you for about the last 30 seconds. So you're oh. going, sorry. 
Do I need to be louder or is it a connection oh, I think issue? We just lost you. It was just uh, nothing at all. Oh, well, that's super special. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is right behind the Jose's property, and they're just requesting for to move from C2 to CT, which is commercial trades and services. So for um, generally for small warehousing or light manufacturing type uses is what CT is good is um, it is intended to house. And so it doesn't need street frontage like right on the corner. It won't be something that will be advertised, um, but they just need space. Uh, and so they're requesting to rezone this. It's about 0.67 acres. The future land use shows this as residential commercial core, and that is in line with their request. Um, that when we look at the future uh, land use plan, it's in line with it. When we look at the compatibility of the surrounding areas, everything is commercial around it. There's no residential that it will impact. And if you look to the east, there's actually several different types of trades and services buildings off of Kevin Lane, if you guys know where that is. And I would classify almost everything on that road as already being sort of a commercial trades and services use. They were just all put in before um, commercial trades and services was a zoning category. Uh, <clears throat> generally, this property could be used for C2, but I would say it's more suited for a CT use that doesn't need that prime street frontage. And when we look at all of the technical information is going to be evaluated when they, they've submitted for their large scale development pending the outcome of this rezoning. Um, so we look at all technical information to make sure they have their proper drainage, to make sure they have water and sewer, and all of those things are available at this location. So um, when we look at the comparison chart, Brad, I believe that you had that pulled up. Yep, right there. So if you want to look at this, the what you have to consider is that if you rezone from C2 to CT, anything that is highlighted that, that could be different could be allowed in this zone. Right. So if you look, animal care general could be a conditional use permit, a bed and breakfast, a car wash could be a conditional use permit, daycare. Um, there's no adult entertainment. There's a funeral home could be conditional versus just permitted. So there are a few changes, but none that were uh, significant. I think that really where you're going to look is the warehousing situation, warehousing primary, ancillary. And then like a welding or machine shop, those are the more intense uses that would then be allowed by a conditional use permit or those ancillary warehousing situations would be allowed by right. So I think those are the, the ones that you're going to want to consider as you um, as you discuss and debate this. But we are recommending approval. Staff is recommending approval, and that's based on the compatibility with the future land use plan, the availability of all of the utilities and uh, the, the minimal anticipated impact on surrounding properties. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you, Courtney. I'm gonna open it up to see if the public, if anybody out there here has any comments on this specific item. Yes, sir, come on up. I'm Dale Drinker, Drinker Heating and Cooling on Kevin Lane, adjacent to the property. Uh, question like what do y'all do on uh, drainage surveys and planning well we have a drainage manual that they have to go by but uh, that's through the engineering and the, the pre-con uh, process um, of it so i'm not exactly our, our building is pretty low to the ground okay there's a new parking lot which is another story <laughs> next door that's pretty high i'm just concerned that make sure that the drainage keeps going north somehow. And the other question would probably be, what's his access going to be? Is it from 112 between Orsland's and behind Jose's? Is that, am I understanding that correctly? That is correct. There's a shared access, agree uh, access easement in that location to provide access onto Highway 112. Where's that coming from, Courtney? It's behind, it's that, that street behind Jose's that goes by the liquor store. Yeah. Okay. And then I do believe they also have an access agreement that they can go uh, just straight south to Highway 412 on the property. Yes. 
and that location. Although we, in previous conversations when they brought this earlier, um, I had a lot of concerns with them trying to turn out of that four, of the 412 entrance just because of the way the light backs up and the it's kind of dangerous if you're especially if you're hauling trailers or anything like that. Um, so we do prefer that they use the 112 connection as their primary entrance and exit. That's all I have. Thank okay. You. And drainage will be addressed during that okay. time, correct? Uh, Courtney? It will be. Right now it's showing going towards the north towards Orchlands. There's sort of a triangle piece of property that they, yeah, that area um, yeah, has been right. a shared detention right. pond and they're reevaluating how much capacity that has. That's where the kind of drainage is kind of going is toward that little triangled area. Correct. Right push it okay any other comments i will ask for a motion from the commission please motion to approve c2 to ct rezone a second motion and a second how about comments um mr bercy um I'm I'm still unclear. What are you building, and why are you asking for a rezone? So it'll be an office warehouse. What we call it, flex use is what some people call it. Yeah, the reason for the rezone is just to fit Tawny Town standards. We didn't request a rezone, but with it being currently zone C two and the the office warehouse being a, a a type of CT, that was just requested for us to <clears throat> ask for that. And if I can remind the planning commission that. Well, it's okay to ask what they want to do. If you rezone this to CT, they can do anything in CT. We cannot hold them to doing what they're requesting at the time. So any anything that is allowed or allowed by conditional use permit in CT could be potentially allowed here. So let's say that they fall through and they don't wind up doing the warehousing. So that's why I'm saying you need to look at this use comparison chart. It's okay to ask James, but just know that literally anything on this list is fair game if we re, if you rezone it to CT. CT, excuse me. And I understand that, Courtney, but when I went through there today and I looked at the differences, I mean, there's not much difference between the two zonings. So it's just trying to make an informed decision as to what exactly we're, if we're recommending they do it a CT or if they're wanting CT and, and what the reasoning behind it. Correct. Um, I'm just I'm just saying like we we can't hold them to it if they're they're telling us they want to do office warehouses. So that's why we recommended that they rezone because this is the zoning category that that would fit in. But it's really important that you consider all available uses. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, yeah. Um, how many employees do you think will come and go out of there? How much traffic? That's hard to say. So the plan as of now, it, it's going to be a 13,000 square foot building roughly. Yeah. That could be as many as nine 1,500 square foot units or a few 3,000 square foot units. So the maximum would be nine units. Yeah. We've had, we've got some of this in Springdale. It's cabinet shop. We've had a pest control business, a baseball coach, different people that just need a little office space, a little warehouse space, and they can run their small business. Yeah. Typically daytime hours and not there's two parking spaces per unit. So that would be the maximum. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other comments? The uh the, the drainage part of it kind of catches my attention. And so I, I guess my question is, regardless of the zoning, is it is the space going to be filled with buildings? Anyway, I mean, would we would you think that if there's a drainage problem, there could be a drainage problem regardless of the zoning? And just making sure that we cover that, and make sure that there's going to be water flow, uh, you know, excess rainfall or anything that, that it's not going to it's not going to bother the drinker. Yeah, I don't think I think the engineering group would would make sure that they uh, uh, do it according to our our plan and get it to where it's not uh, impeding others. But I'm I'm not an engineer, so I can't uh, I can't uh, 
hundred percent say that it, it, it will happen. Or for the, go ahead. I was going to add one comment on that. Um, so with this, we've submitted a large scale development plan already that will be next month's meeting. Whatever zoning this is, whatever we build on C2 or CT, it would still have to go through and meet all the criteria for drainage before that, that would happen. Thank you. I think the zoning of CT is just the reason for it's better suited for what they're putting there. Is it drainage is the same if you built houses there? Or really wouldn't matter, I don't think, what you built there. Maybe a car wash. Nice. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll ask for a uh, roll call, please. Josh? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Um, yes. Candy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Okay. Passes. Going on to item number three is the auto zone large scale development. Applicant is requesting approval of a preliminary large scale development on East Henry de Tonti Boulevard and I'll probably pronounce it wrong, Albano Drive to construct a 6,816 square foot commercial building with associate parking and drives on 0.92 acres. Mark, is this you or do we have Someone online? Oh, well, Courtney did both of these large okay. scales, so I'll... Awesome. I'll Courtney, you back? I am still here, yes. Um, I will say I, the engineers for this project are online, and one of them has his hand raised. Um, if you'd like me to quickly go through it, though, uh, we did, you know, we have reviewed this for engineering and planning, and there were very minimal comments left. Um, nothing that gives us any pause or any concern for... Uh, withholding preliminary large scale approval. So staff is recommending approval of the um, AutoZone large scale development. And if you guys have questions, I'll, I'll be happy to tell you more about it. Um, but Mr. Uh, actually, it's not Mr. Murphy. That's deceiving. Um, <laughs> Both of them have their hands up. So. Yeah, I have their hands raised and would like to talk if, if you're open to that. I am open to that. Okay, guys, either one of you guys can go. My name is Kevin Murphy. I represent AutoZone. Just wanted to introduce myself, thank the board for getting us on the agenda tonight. And if there is any questions for AutoZone, I am here to answer those. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Matt, are you wanting to say something? Yes, sir. I'm just going to mimic Mr. Murphy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. And if there's any technical questions you have about the application, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Matt. Do we have anybody out in the gallery that would like to talk on this item? Seeing none, I will ask for a motion. Motion to approve the AutoZone LSD. That was second that we got a motion in a second. Okay. Comments from commission. Questions uh, with, co with conditions, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I need to amend my motion and add the conditions. Second. And seconded. Thank you very much. We've got a motion in a second on approval with conditions and open to comments or questions. That y'all may have. Going once. Going Next twice. Question uh, is, I, I don't see it because um, it's not necessarily part of it. I'm okay with the zoning part of it, but just the end is that uh, will they be, will they, you be using uh, their access be coming off of Albano? Will they going on, be going on to 412 just as a question? Yeah, yeah the Albano. The, the, It'll be coming off of Albano. Albano, okay. Albano yeah. Okay. Okay, they won't be coming off of the Henry de Tante. It, that won't be a direct. True? Or is that true? Does anybody know? He, that is correct. They have two entrances off of Albano Drive. They will not be connecting directly to 412. Thank Mr. You. Murphy has his hand raised again. All right. 
I was just going to help answer that. Yes, there's no direct access to 412. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from commission? I got a question ish. Is directly adjacent, is that where the Dairy Queen is or is the Dairy Queen off Industrial Circle? I get them three roads mixed up. To the west. That is where the Dairy Queen is. Yes. Gotcha. To the west, yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. If there's no other comments, I'll ask for one more comment from Dean. Oh, I'm sorry, James Dean. Um, with the building face 412, I've not seen any plans or will it face the Albano, the entrances? The front entrance doors are facing Highway 412. Thank you. Mr. Dean, none? A roll call, please. Tom? Yes. James? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Josh? Yes. Candy? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. And you all do not have to stay if you do not. Kevin and Matt, thank you. You guys can, you can, need to leave. You may do so. can leave. Thank you, everyone. Have a great thank night. You. Appreciate thank your you time. Thank you. Oh, you're going to stay to talk. I'm happy to stay. Very good. Okay, we're going to move on to item number four is the Goddard large scale development. Applicant is requesting approval for preliminary large scale development to approve construction of an 8,904 square foot commercial building with associated park and drives and outdoor play area. This is me again. Um, so this lot is within an existing subdivision, like a commercial subdivision called the Fantanel Business Park. And um, yeah, there you go. It's one of the few vacant lots that are left in there and they are proposing to add the child care center. Um, they meet all the requirements for planning and they had very minimal engineering. So there was a little, a few extra comments from the city engineer, but nothing at all that he was concerned about with it moving forward. Um, much like the last one, very minor details, nothing that we're concerned about. So staff is recommending approval of the Goddard Child Care Preliminary Large Scale Development with conditions, which are very mi very minor. Um, Mr. Peterson has his hand raised. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Peterson. Mr. You, Peterson, can you hear us? If you want to he un is. unmute. He's muted. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you now. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, but yeah, my name is Brad Peterson. I'm a civil engineer with Craft & Toll. Thank you to the commission for your time and consideration. It's been a pleasure working with uh, staff and uh, consultants uh, through the process. Uh, we've received the staff report, reviewed that information, and agree with the conditions that are presented uh, for approval. And I'll be happy to answer any questions about the, the project that I can. Thank you, sir. Do we have any comments from citizens on this specific project? No. Do we have anybody in the gallery that would like to talk to us? Uh, good evening, Danny Montez, 714 Belmont Way. Uh, looking at this, I, I just want to give it my approval. Um, I think. I think a, a child care center over here on this side of town would be something we need as a, a city. So I like it. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Most, motion to approve the Goddard LSD with conditions and process notes. Very good. Got a motion? I'll second it. In a second. Discussion from commissioners. Is there any idea what this is going to do to traffic about eight o'clock in the morning? Um, I, I don't think they've done a traffic study on it yet. So no, that's probably not something that they would know. They do, they do have two entrance and exit points. Yeah, I've tried to get out both entrances. Uh, today at two o'clock and coming off of that entrance to 412 
you're definitely not getting left and you had a hard time getting right. The 112 was fair, fair, fared a little bit better, but between the hours of seven and 8.30, that traffic is back way up. So I'm just wondering how much in and out traffic is this gonna cause? <clears throat> and I mean, <clears throat> I was in no hurry to get out, but if I'm a parent dropping off somebody and then I gotta get to work, I might, you know, do something a little hazardous. Um, that may lead to more accidents in that area. Do we know how many children they may? Is there a capacity here? Do they? Do anybody know about a proposal for number of uh, children that they might be able to help hold here? I believe it's 165 or 175 children. I mean, it's not a large facility, you know, under 10,000 square feet. I believe there's uh, six or eight classrooms in there. Uh, being a child care center, it's not like an elementary school where they have a specific start time. Uh, everyone's drop off is staggered. Um, there's not the issues with people lining up for pickup. Uh, each parent is required to sign into the facility and sign their child or, or student out of the classroom itself. So you do have more of a staggered time than you would with a typical K-12 or K elementary school, middle school uh, situation. But uh, we have not done traffic study. I don't know what the peak hour uh, trips would be, um, but the, the, the total number of students is under 200. And uh, we it just in terms of the use, um, there would be a setback of the building in such a way that uh, there would be uh, sufficient traffic um, to be able to come onto the property and not create a long line, um, you know, on the Jerome Drive that would go both ways. I mean, I'm not saying it won't happen, okay, but just as a as a normal thing, uh, you know, we we would like to see that uh, sufficient. Uh, space in the parking would, would and I know that's not part of necessarily zoning, but it is, it does affect it because it's a part of it just because of the use. Um, I don't have, I mean, I, I guess you know more about that than obviously we do. Can you give us any insight about what, what plans might be there and how many cars that would hold in a, in a, in the parking lot? Sure. Um, so Goddard, the Goddard Tie, and it's a national brand, and they have facilities all over the country. So they have minimum standards that oftentimes exceed the, mi the minimum parking standards for cities. And so I think we're at 29 parking spaces uh, on this facility, uh, which is acceptable to Goddard for their program for that number of students um, and meets the city minimum requirements for the recommended, or excuse me, 27 parking spaces. Um, the minimum required for daycare in the city is, is 22. Uh, Goddard found that 27 number to be acceptable. There is a, kind of a circular drive. It's a challenging sh shaped piece of property, uh, but there is a drive that circulates through the site. So um, it's it's not really a dead end. Uh, it has a, a island in the middle of the parking lot where uh, individuals could circulate and find another parking spot. Um, you know, I, again, the, the child care, child facility um, situation makes it a little bit different than a typical elementary school, but uh, we certainly meet the minimum requirements of the city and are in line with um, Goddard uh, corporate standards. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Josh? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Yes. Candy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, that was the last of our items. So uh, item number one, the rezone of the 2398 East Brush Creek Road, that will actually go to city council on March 23rd. And then also item number two, the rezone of East Henry Tony Road, that will also go to uh, city council on the 23rd for their approval. Um, 
with that, we'll ask for comments from staff. Yeah, I'd like to just, uh, you've got up here on the screen. Mark, Mark can you uh, talk into your mic a little bit? Sorry. Talking to the mic, can you hear me? Can you hear him? Okay. I can't, I couldn't hear you, that's all. How old are you? I'm, I'm getting older. I know. Not as old as you. Uh, I don't. I wanted to tell the planning commissioners that we anticipate having the comp plan committee meet probably within the next two weeks. I did hear from uh, Northwest Arkansas Regional Planning. They're uh, putting together the comments as well as uh, uh, that we heard from the public hearing. Um, we're kind of shooting on a timeline that planning commission would vote on the approval of the comp plan in the April meeting, and then it would go to council in May. So we'll get that notice out to you as soon as we uh, figure out a good date. Uh, you notice on the projects, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about that. The We do have a pre-construction meeting for Amelia Acres. It's going to happen this Thursday. Um, Deer Valley was the one that at the last meeting that was basically declined on their 40 plus uh, units. So they're gonna go back. They did a get approval last March for 30 lots. So they're gonna move forward on that instead of, uh, um, since that's already been approved. So we look forward probably in a couple of weeks to have a pre-con on that meeting or on that subdivision. Uh, tech review uh, for the ones that have been showing up for that, which will be on the 7th. We'll have Casalina Warehouse, that'll be the large scale. Uh, Mavin, which is a commercial uh, area, that's a large scale. And then Pam Trucking is expanding their parking that will also include a large scale development. So that's all I have from the planning side. What time is the meeting? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay. So the calendar here. And is Paper Maven, and Maven Commercial the same or two different? Vapor Maven, we've previewed that project, but we have not received anything as of yet to review. So the the commercial part of it is, are those two separate entities or the same? Which one, Vapor Haven? And Vapor Haven and Maven Commercial. It's come across as New Maven. I, I believe they are the same thing. Okay. But, but it's entitled New Maven. But it's two separate projects. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Yes. This one's uh, kind of west of the uh, coffee area up there, off of uh, East Henry Jutante Boulevard. Seven Brew. Yeah. Seven Brew. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? And included in your packet, Commission, is the uh, building activity report. If you've got any questions on that, if you don't tonight, you can definitely ask um, Brad and Mark. If you've got any questions on that. With that being said, I'm going to ask for Commission comments. Candy, do you have anything? No comments. <clears throat> Tom? Yes, we'll uh, discuss it at the next um, Board of Adjustments meeting that we have. I just wanted to plant the seed that um, I believe we need a, as a standard procedure when, when developments come our way, that we consider approving something by the way of um, a, a bill of assurance and or Perform performance bonds. I had a discussion today with Mark and the, just a quick definition of a bill of assurance is more on the um, backs on the front side to make sure that the developer gets done what he says he's going to do when he presents, which has not been the case in some of our developments. And uh, we don't have any teeth to enforce it. Uh, the bill of assurance will post, uh, the, the developer will put the money up front assuring that uh, the funds are there for the road or whatever it is that we would want them to have as they as we give approval whereas the performance bond 
is on a, the back side, and um, it's, it's simply it, it's a it's it's kind of the same thing. It's just a, it's a little bit different kind of instrument, and we'll kind of get into that on the next time. But to be planting that seed for you to do a little work research, consider that because we simply want to be able to uh, have. Um, those assurances as a city that developers do what they say they're going to do and they represent. And uh, it's something that we can do without having to um, have a backside consequence of not getting in and having to pass it on to the, uh, the city for a problem in the future. So that's something I would like to for us to just think about and we'll talk about it more in detail and we'll put it on the board of adjustments uh, for the next meeting. Thank you, Tom. Donnie? Uh, no comments. James? I'd just like to thank my fellow planners for uh, having faith in me to execute the duties of vice chair. Um, your confidence means a lot to me, and uh, I promise to do the job as best as I can. And uh, Kevin, you're not allowed to ever be gone. <laughs> we're, we're expecting to memorize the entire codes 152 and 153. That's, That's right. <laughs> Josh. Yeah, my son actually gave me this quote. So this quote's from an eight-year-old boy that found it. But it says, uh, there may be people that have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. That was Derek Jeter. Very nice. Very good. Um, my only comments are thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, it's been a been a good meeting, um, productive meeting. Next meeting is going to be on the 28th of March. So we're going 28, 28. So um, no other comments. I'm going to ask for adjournment of the planning commission meeting. All in favor? All right. Thank you all.